Hello, and thanks for joining me. What I want to talk about today are my top 10 favourite books on motorcycle travelling. Now, for me, motorcycles have always been about travelling. From the earliest stage I, I can remember, I've wanted a bike not to go racing, but rather to go travelling, to go off exploring the world. So, right from the days before I was old enough to do so, right up to now, I've been a voracious reader of motorcycle travel books, and I have dozens and dozens of travel books on my bookshelf. Some of them are, are just travel books, they're not to do with motorcycling, but uh, there are an increasing number of volumes of motorcycle travel books uh, around now. So I have chosen my top 10 favourites. At the end of my top 10 favourite list I might give a, a few more honourable mentions if I have time, but what I want to do is take you through each of uh, my top 10 and explain to you why it's in my top 10 list and mainly it's about how these books have inspired me in my own travels. So let's start off then with the number one book on my list, which is this one, Ted Simon's book, Jupiter's Travels. I think this is probably going to be on most people's top uh, travel book list uh, because it's been hugely inspirational to so many people. Now, Ted T Simon set off to travel around the world and he spent four years traveling around the world on an old Triumph uh, Tiger um, uh, 100, it was a 500cc uh, Triumph Twin, uh, in 1973. And from 1973 to 77, uh, he spent four years travelling around the, the world on this bike and having some most incredible adventures. And the book was published in 1979. Now, I remember reading it shortly after it was published. I think probably 80 or 81 I read it. I got it out of the library, the uh, library book, and I enjoyed it so much, I later bought a copy. So this particular copy that I have here was published in 85. I think this was the, the second uh, reprint of it. And it's a book I've read many times. Now, the reason why uh, this is number one on my list is, well, firstly, it's a cracking story. It's a very good story. It's well written. Ted Simons tells a, a very good story. Um, but also, it's just such an epic adventure. When I, when I first read this book, um, I'd only just got my first uh, motorcycle and I'd started doing motorcycle touring. And the, the, the first big tour I did was from the UK, uh, through Europe, down through France, Belgium, Holland, Germany, Switzerland, Italy. Um, and that seemed like a huge adventure to me at the time. But then to read this book about Ted Simon spending four years traveling all around the world was, was mind-boggling and hugely inspirational. But uh, another aspect about the book, which I, I do feel, you know, it's very important, worth mentioning, is that Ted Simons didn't do this on some fancy modern adventure bike. He did it on a little Triumph 500 twin, um, and that was probably not the most reliable bike um, he could have taken at the time, as you will find out if you read the book. He did have quite a few problems with the bike, uh, breaking down and what have you, and nor did he have all of the fancy modern equipment that people have these days, you know, alloy uh, pannier boxes and things like that. You know, he just basically strapped his luggage onto this little bike with loads of spares and things. Um, he didn't have the fancy Gore-Tex suits and what have you as well. You know, he had some fairly basic waterproofs and you can see from the picture on the cover, if you, you can see that, you know, he did a lot of the riding in this sort of sheepskin jacket. So, um, you know, I found that as, as a young man with not a lot of money to be able to, to travel, I found that very inspirational, that you don't need the big fancy bike, you don't need all the fancy equipment, you just need to get on the bike and do it and go off and have the adventure. So, number one book, this one. The second book on my list is this one, Old Man on a Bike by Simon Gandolfi. Sorry, that's probably not showing up very well because uh, of the, the lights I've got here. Um, Simon Gandolfi, Old Man on a Bike, another hugely inspirational book, particularly for me as I'm getting older now, it's inspirational because the author set off on a, uh, a five and a half month journey 
uh, travelling the whole length of South America at the age of 73 after having had two heart attacks. Uh, much to the horror of his family who thought they were never going to see him again, he was going to drop dead somewhere out in the in middle of nowhere where there was no um, adequate medical care. Um, but he travelled out to the United States, bought himself a little Honda 125, recognising that, you know, because of his age and his frailty, um, it was probably better not to take a, a bigger bike and, and also something like a, a little Honda um, you can get repaired or parts for pretty much universally so it was a very good choice of bike this little uh, humble bike and some of the misadventures he get, gets into it's good that he's got a lightweight bike that's reasonably easy to to, to manhandle um, it's very well written so as well as being inspirational in terms of uh, you know a chap in his early 70s who was you know not the fittest and not in the best of health it's a very well written story um, very well told story as well so hugely inspirational and uh, yeah this is the book that's made me want to go and, and travel the length of uh, South America myself so that's very very much on my um, list of places to go uh, next. Book number three on my list is Hit the Road Jack by Jackie Furno. This is the cover of the book here I'll put uh, links, uh, details of all the books and, and links in the details uh, below. This book I absolutely love. Where, where do I start with this book? Um, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have met the author several times uh, and she's a very, very charming woman and very humble considering the incredible adventures that she has in this book. Middle-aged woman um, living a fairly conventional, normal life, you know, family, job. She was working as a, as a nurse, district nurse, I believe. Uh, and unfortunately, her marriage uh, hit the rocks. Uh, she and her husband got divorced. So with her part of the divorce settlement, rather than just going and buying another house, a flat somewhere and setting up life again, she decided to go travelling and she went off to India. And when she was in India, she met a Dutchman much younger than herself who persuaded her to buy a bike. She bought a, a Royal Enfield Bullet and together they um, travelled round the world um, for, for many years. And then uh, she then went on to travel for, for more years on her own after that. Uh, a total of seven years that she's uh, travelling round uh, the world on this uh, uh, Royal Enfield Bullet. There's a number of things about this book that make it stand out for me as being such an excellent travel book. One is uh, the female perspective, and I think it's fair to say that the author just wears her heart on her sleeve. She is so open and honest about things and about the way she feels about things. You really get pulled along the, in the journey with her. And more than any other travel book that I've read, I found myself uh, you know, laughing with the author, crying uh, with the author sometimes screaming in frustration at the author, um, at, at the, the poor decisions that she makes and just knowing the trouble it's going to get it into. But she's just so wonderfully open about this that I just find it's just such a, a emotionally engaging book on motorcycle travelling. As I say, more, more than any other that I, I've, I've read. And what a, an incredible odyssey as well of, of seven years on, on the, the road. Hugely, hugely inspirational. But another thing I just want to mention about this book that I really like, and that is the way that Jackie travels. And this, this will come up with, with some of the other books that I mention, in that she's not driving vast uh, distances um, she is exploring the world as she goes along. So she'll stop somewhere for several weeks and, and she'll just explore around the area and then she'll move on. And she'll maybe only move on 150 miles to somewhere else and then she'll stay there for a, a week or two. And you know, what a beautiful pace which to, to explore the world if you have the luxury of seven years in which to do it. If you don't have the luxury of seven years in which to do it, then do it vicariously through, through Jackie's journeys. An absolutely awesome book, this one. Number four on my list is The Motorcycle Diaries by Shea Guevara. 
this is my uh, copy of the book which I've had quite a few years now and obviously you can see the cover of this book is um, based on the film there's been a film made of this journey now this is a remarkable book for a, a number of reasons firstly it's a wonderful boys own type adventure two young men in their early 20s setting off in South America going off to explore the world having the typical kind of adventures and misadventures that, that young men uh, will have and I could certainly relate to a lot of the adventures and misadventures uh, that they have in this book from, from my travels were both on my own and with friends when I was in my early 20s. But also it's an interesting insight into life in South America and culture in South America in the 1950s. You know, this was, this was uh, written in the early 1950s. And I think also, you know, you have to mention that another remarkable thing about the book is, is what the author went on to do, you know, and it, it, he became much better known for one of the revolutionaries in um, uh, Cuba. Uh, and so, um, you know, his, his association there with Fidel Castro and the things that he was involved in Cuba and later, later on in his life of what really made him famous. So it's, it's an interesting insight into, you know, the youth and the making of, of um, one of these people behind the Cuban revolution. So an excellent read, a, a very good story. So that's number four on my list. Number five on my list is Pilgrimage on a Steel Ride by Gary Paulson, and this is the book here. I've read this book several times now because I just enjoy it so much. It's, it's a very easy read and it's very well written. I'm a big fan of Ernest Hemingway and I think Paulson takes big inspiration in his writing style and his lifestyle generally from Hemingway. So if you're familiar with any of uh, Hemingway's writings, uh, you will recognise it stylistically in this book. Uh, you know, it's very tightly written, quite fast paced, very macho, very macho type book. And uh, I've, I actually came to this book through another of Paulson's books, uh, which is called Winter Dance, which is about his entry into Alaskan uh, uh, dog sleigh uh, racing. And he makes many references to it here. So in this book, um, at the age of 57, with uh, heart problems, he buys his very first Harley Davidson, decides to go out and buy himself a Harley Davidson. And then he decides to ride that Harley Davidson from his home in New Mexico, where he lives, up to Alaska. It's a, it's a journey that he's made before many times uh, to go dog sleigh racing, but this time he wants to do the trip on a motorcycle. And one of his friends goes uh, along with him. I read this book a number of years ago and it immediately inspired me to do the same trip and so I've now done that trip myself uh, and as a direct result of, of reading this book, riding all the way uh, up to Alaska. Absolutely phenomenal trip. Uh, um, now a couple of things that stand out about the book, again, you know, the theme throughout all of these books is that they are books that have inspired me, books that I found hugely ins inspirational in terms of my own travelling, is a lot of his reflections whilst he's riding along about life um, and just about, um, well, in, as I say, in a very Hemingway type way about um, manliness and being a man and, you know, and, and the difficulties of his, of his childhood, some of the psychological scars, the problems that he's had throughout his life, you know, very candid uh, looking to uh, the struggles uh, of him growing up, becoming a man and, and who he is now. So a very, very interesting read. The other thing which uh, st stands in my memory about the book is uh, how much rain they, they write through on the trip. You know, people, particularly if you're based in the UK where we have a lot of rain, they tend to have romantic ideas of, uh, you know, everybody in America just rides around in leather vests uh, and, and nothing else because it's permanently sunny. Um, not so if you read this book. He does a lot of the trip in, in waterproofs in rain. But excellent read. So that's number five. Number six on my list is The Long Ride Home by Nathan Millward. And here's my copy of the book. And you see Nathan on the cover of the book there on his little Australian posty bike. Now, it, uh, since writing this book, Nathan's got pretty pretty well known and he, people know him as uh, Nathan the Postman because he rode little 105cc Australian posty bike from Sydney 
all the way back to the UK, all the way back to, to London. And this is the story of his adventures and misadventures. And uh, he certainly has plenty of adventures and misadventures on the way uh, of this book. It's a very open and uh, honest account and I think that's what makes it uh, such a, a good read. Uh, for me as a as a um, an experienced motorcycle traveler myself sometimes I found it uh, frustrating uh, in terms of the you know the what I regarded as some of the unnecessary difficulties that Nathan got into because of his naivety but you know the wonderful thing is that he's totally open and and honest about it and another great thing about the book is that um i think it's fair to say that that that, that nathan was not in the best mental state during a lot of the the uh, the trip and again he's very candid and and open uh, about that as well and so um yeah heart on the sleeve type book and that you know that's what that's what i like about this as well as the, the jackie furnow's book that i mentioned earlier is they're just very honest and open um accounts of the the ups and downs of traveling and you know there are plenty of downs as as well as as ups of traveling now nathan uh, went on to write another book after this one which I, I've, I've got the copy of uh, of this book here as well um, uh, running towards the lightway he takes his little posted bike over to America and rides it all the way up to Alaska and that they that's an equally good book but I mentioned the first one because you know I, I feel that's that's the that's the book which established uh, Nathan in the in the adventure travel world so book number seven now this one is a little bit different and so I need to explain this book is called sketches of Spain by Duncan Goff and here's the cover of the book Sketches of Spain by Duncan Goff. Now Duncan is a very very well traveled writer um, and he spent many years traveling in Spain and Portugal and he's actually written several guidebooks on uh, traveling in, in that part of the world. They're excellent uh, guidebooks but this book is really a collection of his sketches from his travels and the reason I've chose it is because I just love the way that Duncan travels. You know, rather than trying to rush from A to B, uh, cover very large distances or you know, set records in terms of distances, number of countries travelled or what have you, Duncan travels quite slowly and he explores, he explores, you know, he likes meeting the people that he goes along, so he talks to the, to, to the people that he meets, um, he uh, explores the food, he explores the culture, he explores the history, he explores the landscapes. And the reason I've chosen this book as being inspirational is because that's exactly my philosophy for travelling as well that for me is the number one reason for traveling it's meeting different people with different worldviews different cultures discovering how things are done different ways of living different parts of the world and that is hugely inspirational um, this is a book primarily of Duncan's sketches so when he's traveling he always carries a sketch pad with him and he does beautiful ink and uh, pen pen and ink and wash uh, uh, drawings and a lot of photographs in here as well and it's just about that um, stopping and taking in what's around you whilst whilst you're traveling and really appreciating what's around you rather than just rushing at high speed down roads from from point a to b and that's why it's inspirational and that's why it's on my list so that's number seven Book number eight on my list is Into Africa by Sam Manicum, and here's my copy of the book. Sam Manicum is a very, very well-travelled adventurer and he's also an extremely good writer. You're not going to find a better written motorcycle travel book than, than one of Sam's books. He's written several books now. Um, I think I've got four uh, of his books. I don't know if it, he's, he's written a more recent one. Uh, but this Into Africa is his first book and that's why I chose it. Again, it's hugely inspirational 
is this book. Sam set off what originally a plan just, I think, to ride a year through Africa, and then he just ended up spending some like nine years, I think, on the road, traveling all over the, the world. So that this outlines his travels through, through Africa. And I, I chose this one on my list for a couple of reasons. One is that myself, I've not traveled too extensively in Africa yet. I've only really traveled in, in North Africa. So I was very interested to, to read this book and find out more about Sam's adventures and find out more about traveling in Africa. And it is an extremely good read. Um, some quite scary bits in it, uh, actually. Um, but um, yeah, I don't, don't won't spoil it for you if, if you haven't read it, but I really recommend this one or, or any of Sam's books. Uh, very, very good motorcycle adventure books. Number nine on my list is The Long Way Round by Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman. And here's my copy of that book. I said at the start that the books that have made it onto this list are books which have inspired me. And of course, this is a book uh, that has inspired lots of people. It's probably one of the most inspirational books, or certainly the television series. I think most people have seen the television series and been inspired by that. So this is the book based on their adventures. It is worth buying and reading the book because Always in a book, you're going to get more insight, more details into things than they can squeeze into a into a television program. So it, it's not it's not just duplicating what you get on the television series. It's definitely worth reading the book separately. But you know how inspirational has this been? Well, um, how many GSs would we see on the road these days if it wasn't for for you and, and Charlie? I mean, it, it's had a phenomenal impact on the adventure touring world hasn't it um, you know that that first adventure that they went on so it, it's a it's a must read is this in terms of being one of the most influential travel books um, around and number 10 on my list is Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance and this is my copy I think this is the third copy I've owned of this book I think that the first one fell apart um, the second one I lent to somebody and I never got back, so this is my third copy. Um, now, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance is one of those books which you just have to have read. If you've not read it, um, I warn you, it's not about Zen and it's not really about motorcycle maintenance. And as a travel adventure book also, um, it's not a fantastic travel adventure book. So you might say, well, why is it on your list then? Well, let me explain. Um, it is about a motorcycle journey. It's about the, the author uh, going on a, a road trip on his motorbike with his very young son riding pillion on the back and with uh, a couple on a BMW, a married couple who are friends of his on a BMW. Uh, but it's only a couple of week uh, trip uh, across the states on this bike. But what's important is the, um, the, the thoughts or the discussion of the author's thoughts as he's riding uh, along. And so it's really a philosophy book. In, in the book, he, he explores uh, quality uh, and it's all about this uh, exploration of this concept of quality. But the motorcycle maintenance bit that comes in, and the reason why I like it, because it's had a profound impact on me. And if you see some of my other videos, you'll see not me necessarily referencing this book directly, but, but some, of the, uh, some of my thoughts are definitely inspired by this. Um, he contrasts his own attitude towards motorcycle maintenance with that of his friend John, who's riding the BMW, who's traveling with him. And he outlines two very different attitudes towards motorcycle maintenance, which he then you know, extrapolates out towards uh, um, attitudes towards life. Uh, his friend John doesn't really take any interest in the way his bike works, mechanic, and if there's something wrong with it, he just takes it to a garage. If there's something goes wrong with it, he gets frustrated, he can't fix it, he doesn't understand it, doesn't want to understand it. Whereas Piercing, the, the author, you know, really makes an effort to try and understand the bike and to be able to logically diagnose problems and work out how to fix them. And I first read this book when I was probably about um, 14, 15 years old and it, it had a profound uh, impact on my attitude towards 
motorcycles and motorcycle maintenance and tackling my own maintenance myself. So, say, maybe a slightly unusual choice for, for a list of motorcycle travel books, but it's a must-read book, is this. Okay, so that was my top ten list, but before I finish, here are a few honourable mentions of a few more books that it's just worth mentioning if you're into reading about these things. First of all, uh, number one on my list was uh, Ted Simon's Jupiter's Travels. Uh, and that, that's probably the, you know, recognised as the, the all-time uh, greatest. But Ted Simons has written many other books uh, since then, uh, which I have. So, um, this, uh, this, this book here, Riding Home, which is about, uh, um, it, you know, what happens to him after Jupiter's travels. Then we've got uh, Dreaming of Jupiter here which is about him uh, revisiting some of his uh, uh, travels. And then, uh, I think this is the latest one, it's called Rolling Through the Isles by Ted Simon, uh, about him uh, travelling through Britain, you see, going uh, travelling through Britain. And, uh, you know, he's such a good writer and such a, a lovely man as well, a really, really uh, nice man. Um, it's worth reading these other books if you if you enjoyed the the first book. So some other honourable mentions. I've got a couple of books here by uh, Paul Carter. Um, this this first one is called "Is That Bike Diesel, Mate?" and the second one is "Ride Like Hell and You'll Get There." Again, I'll put all of these details in the, the bottom. Um, just Paul Carter, very very funny writer. The very very witty books of these, so quite a quite a light read. Very very entertaining. They really do make you laugh out loud. So a couple more honourable mentions then. Um, this is a book which um, I read um, many years ago, and this is a book that inspired me to go um, and travel across America. It's called Good Vibrations, Coast to Coast by Harley, um, by um, uh, Tom Cunliffe, and. Um, yeah, that really did inspire me to go and ride coast to coast across America, something which I've now done uh, several times. Um, you know, at the time that the author did the, the trip and um, uh, wrote the book, it was not so usual for people from Europe, certainly for people from UK, to go and do a trip like that. So it was something a little bit unusual. Another book that's very uh, entertaining, um, uh, well, well written, uh, Mike Carter, Uneasy Rider. Um, so an another good uh, tale of motorcycle uh, adventures. And then the last one I'll mention is Africa Brew Ha Ha um, by Alan Wellen. And um, that's the, the cover of that book. Again, another very interesting read. So. That's just a few of my favourite. I've got a huge shelf of books. I've got many others, but um, that, that's my top ten list and a few honourable mentions. So, hope you found that inspirational. If you uh, want to uh, do a bit of reading, then yeah, some inspiration for you there. Thank you.